The goal of this module is to learn how to perform a focused physical examination of a stable preterm infant. Our patients today are 31 week gestation premature twins who are a few days old. On general observation, you can see that the infant appears well and is alert and active in the supine position in his isolate. He demonstrates some jitteriness of his upper extremities. He has some mild retractions, but is not requiring any respiratory support. He has a nasogastric tube in place for enteral feeds and electrodes for monitoring his heart rate are on his chest. There is a pulse oximeter attached to his foot and a temperature probe on his flank. The dried remnant of the umbilical stump is still attached. There are no obvious dysmorphic features. Examination of the oropharynx reveals no clefts or other abnormalities. The skin appears tinged with jaundice, but there is no evidence of cyanosis or anemia. There is a patch of erythema toxicum on his abdomen. There are no birthmarks or other obvious lesions. The cardiovascular system is generally evaluated first as the heart sounds are more difficult to hear if an infant is crying. Auscultate the heart after you have first noted the position of the apical impulse, which can quite often easily be seen in the preterm infant. Remember to specifically listen for the valve closing sounds S1 and S2, extra sounds S3 and S4, murmurs, arrhythmias, clicks and rubs, and palpate for precordial heaves or thrills. Remember to assess capillary refill and check your femoral pulses for symmetry and brachiofemoral delay. You can see periodic breathing in our patient. This is reflective of breathing immaturity. Assess the infant for signs of respiratory distress. These include expiratory grunting or moaning, nasal flaring as demonstrated here when the infant is sucking. As you can see, our infant has both intercostal and subcostal retractions, but is not requiring any respiratory support to maintain appropriate oxygen saturations. Also look for any asymmetry of the chest, which may suggest a pneumothorax. Auscultate the lung fields, paying particular attention to any asymmetry in air entry and breath sounds, and any added sounds such as crackles or rails. Examine the abdomen, assessing for distension, bowel loops or visible peristalsis, any tenderness or guarding, organomegaly, masses and bowel sounds. Make sure the anus is patent. In addition, don't forget to assess for inguinal hernias and make sure that they are reducible. Check for diaper dermatitis and any anal fissures. Also inspect the contents of the diaper. In boys, check that both testes are descended. When performing the neurological exam, assess tone, movements and reflexes for appropriateness for gestational age and any unexpected asymmetry. Remember to check the anterior and posterior fontanelles to see if they are open, large or small, bulging or depressed. Assess for moulding of sutures or any evidence of caput, cephalohematoma or subgaleal haemorrhage. Check the red reflexes. Check for any signs suggestive of spina bifida occulta such as hair tufts or sacral dimples. Also, don't forget to check the primitive reflexes, though some of these may not be well manifested at 31 weeks gestation, as you can see here during examination of our premature twins. The rooting reflex is elicited by stroking the infant's cheek. The infant should turn their head in the direction of touch and open their mouth in anticipation of feeding. This is minimal in our patient. The sucking reflex is elicited by touching the inside of the mouth. Assess the quality and strength of sucking. As expected, this is weak and inconsistent in our preterm infant. The palmar grasp reflex is elicited by stroking or placing your fingers in the infant's hand. The infant's fingers will close and grasp tightly. This appears from around 28 weeks gestation and is nicely demonstrated by our patient. The plantar grasp reflex is elicited by stroking the inner sole of the foot, resulting in flexion of the toes. On the other hand, the Babinski reflex is elicited by stroking the outer sole of the foot, resulting in extension of the toes. The Moro reflex is elicited by a sudden drop of the head in relation to the body, resulting in symmetrical abduction and extension of the arms, followed by symmetrical adduction and deflection of the extremities. 
This appears from 32 weeks gestation and therefore is not yet well demonstrated by our patient. The gallant reflex is elicited by holding the infant in ventral suspension and stroking the paravertebral region in a cephalocaudal direction. This results in the infant curving his body towards the side stroked as you can see here. The stepping reflex is elicited by holding the infant upright with feet touching the surface of an edge and then tilting the trunk forward. This results in the infant lifting one leg and foot as if he's about to start marching. The asymmetric tonic neck reflex is elicited by turning the infant's head to one side. The limbs on the side that the head is turned towards will extend, while the opposite limbs will flex into a fencing position. This usually appears at 35 weeks gestation and is minimally present in our preterm patient. At all times, pay close attention to the infant's neurodevelopmental status. If the infant appears unduly stressed or agitated during any stage of the exam, you should pause and make sure that the infant is comfortable and stable before proceeding with the next step. That concludes the module on physical examination of the 31-week gestation preterm infant.